start off by saying one thing. Spoilers. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. If you have not seen Lady in White, or at least my main review of it, please stop watching this video now and go watch one or the other, or both. But otherwise, please do not leave comments about how I ruined the movie for you, because primarily what I plan to talk about is the mystery and resolution of this film, Lady in White. So please, if you don't want to hear any more, stop the video now. I'll wait. <laughs> Okay, good. You're still here. Clearly, you've either seen the movie or you don't care about spoilers. Well, we'll try and keep this short and sweet. If you've seen the movie, you know that the killer was the family's friend, Phil, played by Lynn Carew. I felt I did Lynn a great disservice by leaving him out of this review, primarily. He's probably the best actor in the piece, aside from Lucas Haas. Phil, it turns out, has been assaulting boys and girls for the last ten years, and it was him who attacked Lucas in the closet. I left Phil out of the review completely because I felt to talk about any of the people who might have been the killer would have drawn too much attention and perhaps given it away. Karen James, a reporter for the New York Times, said that one of the things that hurts the movie is that we figure out very on early on who the killer is. I would have to strongly disagree. While the list of possible suspects is relatively short, unless the movie had gone with the old man Jenkins method from Scooby-Doo, Phil would actually probably be one of the least suspicious. For me, I would have been more suspicious of Angelo's other friend, Tony. From the perspective of the way the movie is done, he's not talked about very much, and he only has a couple of scenes. From a character position, he seemed the most upset when he heard about what the killer was doing to the kids. And that, to me, could indicate self-loathing for one, but also a desire to push as much suspicion away from himself as possible if things ever started to come out. Bastards who go after kids do it. They're sick. Ah, oh, I'm gonna go close up. But as far as the actor himself, Mr. Len Carew, I have nothing but praise. Len has had a long and distinguished career and is currently a regular on the CBS show Blue Bloods. He was also the original Sweeney Todd on Broadway with Angela Lansbury. I must also point out that he is the scariest part of this film. I mean, look at this scene. We know he's the killer by this point, but Frankie doesn't. This is just eight kinds of creepy. Look at this. Pull back. Hold your breath. Release. Yeah, not bad. When Frankie realizes that Lynn is the killer. Hey, Frankie, what's the matter? Come on, open the door. Please. Frankie. Eesh. I was all expecting his skin to crack open and uncover the monster within at this point. He plays it amazingly scary, but he's also fantastic with his heartfelt explanation of why he's done what he's done. Now you gotta listen to me, broken ass. No, we all deserve to die. Tell your why. Frankie! Tell your why. Because the lives of the wicked should be made brief for the rest of us, death will be a relief. We all deserve to die. Okay, seriously, but the moment on the cliff showing the character's self-loathing at the monster he has become is fantastic. Look at this. Just tell me where it is, Frankie, and I won't hurt you. I don't want to hurt you. I love you. You're a beautiful boy. Please. Give me the ring and I won't say anything about it. Nobody has to hear anything about it. Your dad doesn't even have to know. Oh, God. 
I could never face him if he knew. Where is it? Give me the ring! So all in all, I give Len Carew a very big five out of five wrenches. And if I could give him six, I would. I also skipped over a lot of the subplot of the janitor accused of being the killer. It turns out there was a woman who had lost her son to the killer and wanted revenge. So when the janitor is released, this happens. Hello, Miss Carroll. I just wanted to say, I'm sorry for all the trouble you've been through. Thank you. That means a lot coming from you. Kind. Very kind. That's for my Richie. Ooh, what to say? Ooh, that you only meant well. Well, of course you did. Ooh, what to say? Mm, that it's all for the best. Of course it is. Seriously, this moment is pretty shocking in the movie. And just like the characters, you don't see it coming until a few seconds before it happens. Is it likely that they would have let her get so close after she'd been so vocal about her son's murder? Probably not. But you never know. It's a heartbreaking moment, both for the characters who will, of course, get shot and die, but also, of course, for the mother because you know she's gone insane. Finally, the last thing I want to talk about may be my biggest criticism of the movie. At the very end, Phil is fighting with Frankie, and Phil goes over the cliff, and we think he's dead. The mother and daughter are rejoined and go into eternity, and it would seem that the death of the killer has set them free. But guess what? Phil is still alive! So what is it that sets them free? Is it the fact that the house was burning down, and that the memory of them was somehow contained by the house? Because Melissa does come flying out of the flaming house. Or is it the fact that the killer has now been exposed, and that justice is in the process of being done? What exactly sets them free? It's not quite clear. But whatever the reason, I'm glad it happened this way, because it gave us the opportunity for Angelo, knowing what his best friend in the whole world has done to his family and to those kids, to still reach out and try to save his friend. No. But Phil can't live with himself, and so he lets go. This gave us a great acting moment between these two, and for my money, a little minor confusion on the plot was worth that scene. I also wanted to point out that the director of this film saw our initial review of the movie, and he seemed to like it. I wanted to say thank you to him once again, both for this movie and for his support. So until next time, this is the Movie Mechanic, signing off. And in case you thought I missed this joke, here you go. Stupid minds! Stupid! Stupid!